What's going on? It's Sports Center on YouTube. That's Randy Scott. I'm Gary Strysky. A special guest to help us send you into the pre -end in style. Kenny Chesney, ever heard of him? <laughs> going to talk some ball. We're going to talk some touring. Exactly. We're also going to be uh, talking no shoes, no shirt, no problem, really. We're going to find out together, but we begin with the return of the WNBA. The Olympic break is over. These two ruled with a golden fist. Sabrina Ionescu, Brianna Stewart, part of the Golden Girls squad there for Team USA. Oh, and nice Stewie one. came correct. It was Courtney Vandersloot who found her. Stewart said it wasn't easy to stop the season, just go hard stop, but the impact of the gold medal on her neck was incredible. And those two working again, Vandersloot to Stewart. CV had five dimes. Sabrina Ionescu gets the floater to go. We all float down here. You'll float too. Both gold medalists looking good early on. New York's up 17. This is in LA. What jet lag. They came back from Paris. Kayla Thornton a triple. Liberty up 19 after the first quarter. She had 16. Did Kayla Thornton later. Sabrina. Look at Sab. Oh, Look at Sab kid. get to the rim. Sab, not necessarily reliable vehicle. Sab, the motor that is driving the libs. Keep that in mind. And then Brianna Stewart inside. More, what a nice cut from Stewart. Well, that's how I felt like I can make fun of it. Stewie <laughs> helping the Liberty up 29 points. It's their largest halftime lead by any team this season. Stewie was 10 of 15 from the floor, but she hasn't made a three since June. She was 0 for the month of July. She was 0 for 4 in the first half. Oh, we are going to snap that drought. Look at Stewie. She ripped off three straight triples. Oh, pull up. You're like, give yeah. me some video evidence. Fine, I got it for you. Stewart, another one. Finished 3 of 4 from distance, a personal 9 to nothing run. 27 points. Liberty going to win by 35. Third win by 35 or more this season. That's the most in a single season in WNBA history. Here's Stewie on finishing the regular season strong. An Olympic year is, is tough because, you know, you're with your team, you're away from your team, your team's working hard while you're at the Olympics. You come back and, like, um, all of a sudden we got to go. Um, so I think that just – really taking into consideration that every game is really so, so important. We want to continue to um, get better. We don't want to peak too soon. Uh, and we want to enjoy, you know, the adversity and everything that's going to come our way because um, it only gets harder from here. I mean, don't make it look difficult. Not since Brianna Stewart joined this team. Since she ran with the Liberty, they now have seven 30-point wins. The rest of the league combined for six over that span. New York has now won five straight. It's the longest active streak in the league. Told you it got cooler. Right I did get a lot. <laughs> the aura has lifted. Penny Chesney's in the Come building. Come on. What's up, fellas? Multi-platinum. Listen, if you're in New York, get yourself to the show, MetLife Stadium. Yeah. One of us is going to be there. No big deal. On Saturday. <laughs> and then three straight shows next week in the Boston area at yeah. Foxborough. I usually close it out. Want to get to that. Do want to start, though, with where your story begins down okay. in Tennessee. Sure. What, is, what does Tennessee football mean to you? Well, it's, it's all we grew up on. You know, we, we as a, I lived, I feel very fortunate to have lived in a, in a community and in an area of the country where, you know, football and sports and family and church and that, that kind of stuff was all we had. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any pro allegiance to anybody because we didn't have pro sports. It was yeah. all Tennessee football. Sure. And it's still that way. Knoxville, baby. Hey, it was just yeah. a couple years ago, man, that we saw the scene, them rushing Neyland Stadium after finally <laughs> beating Bama in your crib. <laughs> Starting the season, ranked 15. All right, we'll see what Coach Heupel has to do. What is your outlook? What is your um, take on the playoff field expanding to 12 teams? Well, I think, first of all, I think they're going to be pretty good. Yeah. I mean, their schedule is definitely in their favor, you sure. know. So, um, but my take on it is I'm still going to watch it. Of course. I don't, care, I don't care how many teams <laughs> are yeah. in it. You know, and I think it's exciting. I think that um, there was always an argument, okay, number whoever was number five or six. Sure. I was, I was very frustrated and upset. Yeah. It's going to be the same way, whoever's 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Which is why I had to preface the preseason rank of them being 15. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, there you go. They're only letting 12 in. So they got some work to do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. A little, bit, a little bit of ground to make up. But that was, you know, the, the argument against expanding the playoff was, oh, no, it devalues the regular season. And I think you just have to go to one game there to oh, realize no, how beautiful? dang valuable yeah, yeah. the season is. You've played there. Right, growing up that in the was, shadow of it and, and, and played there back in 03, what was that What was that like for you? Look, I used to sit, well, on this side, um, in, I know where it is, section double K, with my father and my friend Jim Cogdell. And if yeah. you would have told me when I was a child, Come sitting on. in that football stadium, that I was going to play it one day. And then 
you know, and to see what's happened to us after that, I would have told you you were crazy, you know, but that, that you know, Tennessee football was a huge part of, of the way I grew up and, and my love of sports. Of course, I got that from my father. You know, my father was a coach and, and um, I got the music from my mom. I got my love of sports from my dad. You know, you, you know why he loves sports. You, you can tell Kenny Chesney loves sports because he decided willingly to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we played time. last night in Maine. <laughs> you were in Maine last night. Oh, Bangor, we played last park, night man. in Bangor, Maine. Oh, my Lord. And you're at <laughs> so, yeah. MetLife tomorrow That's night. That's dedication. Le MetLife Stadium tomorrow night in New York. And then yeah. we end the tour next weekend with uh, three days in Gillette. Well, there oh, are wow. so many sports stadiums on this tour. I'm curious, your, your favorite non kneeling stadium to play? Is, is what? Well, it, the ones that are, aren't are built to maximize suites. You know what I mean? Like, okay. uh, so the older stadiums yeah. are louder. Okay. Like you know Williams I mean? Bryce down in Columbia? Like that place or, you know, Pittsburgh is really loud. Yeah. Uh, uh, Arrowhead is really loud. Seattle is really loud. Um, That's pretty cool. The new ones, I, I love playing them, but you, you almost feel like they don't have a home field advantage because sure. <laughs> the sound's not the same. Mm. You play in front of hundreds of thousands at these at these concerts, and it's a who's who of A-listers walking in. Obviously, yeah. sports royalty. You've already, you know, hosted Dabo. You've had Mike McCarthy. You've yeah. Obviously, the relationship with Robert Kraft. When they come to one of your shows, is it like, hey, they get to meet Kenny Chesney, or is it, hey, can you spend some time with Dabo today, or whatever? The case well, is it's a, there's just such a mutual respect. Sure. You know, because honestly, it, it, I think it's, it's kind of across the board. I've been doing this for several years now, and I've met a lot of athletes, coaches. So awesome. yeah. <laughs> we do that every Friday night so before awesome. our Saturday show. But it, it, it just, you know, all, every musician, if you ask them, would love to play professional sports. And almost every professional uh, yeah. baseball player or football player or basketball player that I've met would give anything to do what we do. So when they're at a show, it's just, it's, there's just a level of mutual respect, you know? What I think of, of you and, and covering high school football, as we both did it yeah. earlier in our, our careers, that Boys of Fall song is Thank an you. anthem. <laughs> I mean, it is an anthem. And it, I think of you in a football uniform. I know you played. Yeah, it's an interesting wondered, thing to see me in a football uniform. But. Well, I mean, we see it up here, yeah. But, yeah. but listen, like, it's you know, good fit. you can go certain heights, certain weights. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, what's, what's it here to get out after it? But I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like, how your legacy as you're living it, like you see folks who watch it shows in the mid 90s. Yeah. Hand in the air. Yeah, yeah. I saw you at FedEx Field, George Strait Country Music Festival 2000. Wow. Right? Long like, time ago. And I'm going to go see you tomorrow. I mean, we're talking 24 years. I've had, yeah. I've had three kids in that span. I could bring one of my kids to your shows. Generationally, as you have been the guy up on stage watching this play out, what's that, what's that like for you? That's insane. It really is. I mean, I still, I love what I do. I, I you know, I, I know it's a gift. I, uh, to be creative in your life and to give the world something that didn't exist yesterday, you know. And so that's that's the one that's the one of the beauties of being a songwriter and being the person up on stage that gets to to play those songs for people. It's the most amazing feeling in the world, you know. And so and to do it like like we've been doing it for a while is is, is like I said, it's just a gift, and I'm I'm very grateful for it. And but you know I I've got four guys that I went to high school with that are out on the road with me now that I went to high school with That's college. Awesome. That's awesome. And we watched a lot of football growing up. Yeah. And to be able to play the places, you know, like we're so excited to when we played the Rose Bowl in 2015, Sick. we were so excited, and we just kind of we all of us went to the very last row. Like you saw at Arrowhead, yeah. Yeah. we do that every Friday night. So it was really interesting to play the Rose Bowl and sit up there with your dad and some of his buddies and my friends because it meant so much. Because we went to the top of the stadium the Friday night before our Saturday show and just sat there and just yeah. <laughs> in silence. It was it was yeah. beautiful, oh. you know. And so just to have a moment of recognition about um, you know what's happened to us yeah. is, was really really nice. For those who might not be familiar, what's the connective tissue? Obviously. Knoxville, that's home. Yeah. Um, what's the connective tissue with Boston? Because it seems like some of your yeah. biggest and best shows are at Foxborough, two, three nights, mm -hmm. right? Joe yes. Milton, Tennessee quarterback. Now, yeah. he's, right. yeah. now he's on the roster. Boston, <coughs> one of my favorite songs. Right. Come to Boston. Please come to Boston. Please come to Boston. Yeah. Come to Boston. Yeah. Yeah. What's that tissue? Well, it started, um, honestly, when I was a kid. Yeah. There was a guy that played at Tennessee that got drafted, a uh, wide receiver named Stanley Morgan. I don't know if you guys remember oh, yeah. the name or not, okay. but I, I loved him. And, yeah. and he, that's where I first started paying attention to the Patriots because he, yeah. he, he played for got the Patriots. It. And um, when I was a kid, 
I always, you know, I, I know you guys remember because we didn't have all, we didn't have Sports Center then. We didn't have all the sure. the channels and the ways to uh, consume sports. Mm -hmm. So we had what we had in East Tennessee, and there was a show every Saturday called This Week in Baseball with Joe Garagiola. Yes. And every, I, I love that show, and and they they usually had the Red Sox on after that because they were really good during yep. that time so okay. the networks played you know who was good yeah and yeah. so that's where I, I became a Red Sox fan and then later in life I, I my you know with my time in the Virgin Islands almost nine out of ten people that I met down there were from New England yeah, yeah. and so it just became a thing over the years and 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 because I played sports I'm very superstitious so there was a year, like you were talking about Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, when yep. I saw Gruden down there. Like the, the first year that I opened my tour in Tampa, we closed it that year in Foxborough. And it was one of the most amazing uh, experiences. The whole tour was just yeah. awesome. And because I'm so superstitious, I said, we're doing that every year. We're opening in Tampa, <laughs> yeah. we're closing in Foxborough, and that's the way we've done it ever since. And that's the time of year, he mentions the time in the Virgin yeah. Islands. You get out of the New England weather. Correct. New England yeah. folks are smart enough to get <laughs> yeah. the heck out of here that's right. and get down there. Will you stick around for us? I know you've got sure. a weekend show, MetLife Stadium, Sun Goes Down Tour. Again, I don't think there are tickets, but there's no bad seat in the building. <laughs> that's tomorrow and then three straight nights next week in Foxborough. Stick around because we do this thing called on Fridays. We're working for the pre-end. Or we just—it's kind of a bonus top plays sure. as we throw. Exactly. Yep, we go with a little Miami Vice in the background. <laughs> we get the lights. The studio goes nuts. Kenny Chesney dropped it for it. We're we'll working. We'll take, yeah. I'll slide the sleeves. <laughs> I'll slide the sleeves up. All right, we're gonna start. We're leaping for the weekend. You mentioned watching baseball. This is Jacob Young, just home run robbery at the wall. That's a pretty tall wall. Extra bases robbery. How about that? That's not bad. That's not bad. Come on. You guys got a good baseball program down there at Tennessee, too. Your head coach yeah, you guys win. Your yeah, manager's they a little nuts, but, but he's, a, he's a good time. <laughs> I think that's part of the charm, though, right? It's, yeah. yeah it's aren't we all a little nuts? All right, next up, we got a little minor league baseball. This, Kenny, is falling yeah. for the freak, and I think we're about to see here. The falling. Memphis Redbirds versus the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. Bit of an oxymoron. And a Jumbo Shrimp finds himself caught in a net. Ish. Ooh. That's Nick Gordon chasing down the foul. You ever go jumping in the crowd, Kenny? Or is that a I used younger to. man's game? Used to? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think that's what, yeah. Come on, man. You cut out a stone. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's too true. I'm you worried. got the muscles to fight him off, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we may do that in New and York tomorrow. I know tomorrow. security. You need to travel heavy. <laughs> do, we have time? do we have time for acing for the freaking? Do we, I don't know how much time you get for golf. Here it comes. I don't know if you're a golfer at all. That I used to be a golfer. Okay. But tame for you. But we got an ace, Chris Kirk. Chris Kirk on 14. This is a par three. I say golf is so much easier. You See, that's the, why I don't golf. I can't do that. You keep the putter in the bag. These guys figure out how now to putt. That's where I lose yeah, yeah. mine. I'm a you, chipper and a putter. Oh, okay. All right. So we play the scramblers. Huh? Yeah, we'll do the scramble <laughs> any day of the week. Like, I'll meet you on the green. Yeah. I'll get us, I'll <laughs> get us close enough. That you can't get us on the green. It's all good. Yeah. All right. So we're going to try to get Gary out to the show tomorrow night. I'm coming. Great. I'm going to sleep depth. It's sleep depth on Sunday morning. It's yeah, be darned. It's thank it. you so much for the time. Man, this thank you so guys cool. for having me. So I really, I watch you guys every morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, oh fantastic. No pressure watches, or nothing. You should. You should. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah, pressure. Sure. No good luck to the balls. Hannah, Hannah Storch said to Mitch and the Irish. Of course. Indeed. I told her that was in the overrated section. That's in the overrated section. Yeah. yeah. Listen, when the, when the playoff expands yeah. to 16 teams. Sure. Yeah. Don't <laughs> <either>. <laughs> we love you, Hannah. We're just joking. We're just joking. <laughs> I need you to lock in. I'm locked in. This could be our chance. How do we do that, though? Be ourselves. Give me Dak Prescott. I want Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. We have security here. <laughs> be prepared to remove this man. Uh -huh. from right. Dak Prescott. Yeah, I don't coast out. Take the knife out of my back. Go ahead. Right home. Take it out. What the hell has happened to y'all? He's on the wrong side of 40. As somebody who's been through a midlife crisis, <laughs> I got four tattoos to show for it. Walking. So what'd they do? No, no. Well, you got to get down. You got to get down. Right <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? You got to get right here. Yeah. Oh. You know, y'all talk a lot. Mm. Oh, you say a lot. You say a lot of important things. And, and for those that don't know, you sound brilliant. I really, really do. Got some numbers for you. You appreciate that because you're spitting out data, right? I'm a numbers guy, so let me break it down. I'm a numbers let me, guy. Let me <laughs> the polar side. Right. What you two were outstanding. Thank, Thank you very much. Ooh, something wrong with you. <laughs> something wrong with you. Especially you, guy. I don't know what. I don't know what. I appreciate that, Stephen. I don't know what the hell. Take that one right here. So I'm pretty sure he loved us. I think it went well. <laughs> yeah. Are we ever going to be allowed back?
That look says no. <laughs> uh, I think the Dak Prescott take was a strong out of the gate move. It, well, and I'm glad that the internet decided to be like super reasonable about the discourse about yeah. it. And they, so calm. And they sort of understood. Yeah. And it did resonate with them just a little bit. Cowboy. If you listened to the nuance of my argument, yeah, but I don't have time for that, even though this is the internet. Cowboy fans are known for appreciating nuance, mm -hmm. right? That's that's like in the name. It's important. And they keep their takes measured, mm -hmm. you know, and their reaction to takes. When is the fifth tattoo? Uh, ooh, maybe when we get invited back. Oh, ooh. so never. <laughs> Thanks for watching SportsCenter on YouTube.